What's up guys? This is just going to be a pretty basic tutorial for how to access the dark web using Tor. It's actually inspired by one of my friends who told me that he recently went onto Tor, but he wasn't really able to find anything. So if you've ever been in that position, then this is going to be the guide for you. Now, of course, you're going to need the Tor browser bundle, which can be downloaded from torproject.org forward slash download. So just go ahead and download whichever one uh, you want to use. Also, another way you could potentially access Tor is using Brave. So if you go to this hamburger menu here and you go down to, ah, right here, new private window with Tor. So this is going to connect to the Tor network using Brave. Now, I don't really recommend accessing Tor this way, especially if you're gonna be uh, really doing anything on Tor besides exploring because when you use Brave, people can kind of tell that you're using Brave. You know, your user agent is gonna look a little different than someone using the proper Tor browser bundle. So it can be bad for OPSEC, just, you know, it's, it's not recommended to do this, but it is technically possible. But anyway, let's uh, go to what is recommended. So when you first open up Tor, it's gonna look something like this, and you just click connect, and bam. Now you are connected to Tor using the Tor browser bundle. So easy parts out of the way, but how do we really get to the dark web? Well, really the dark web is just websites and services that end with .onion instead of .com or .org. And you can only access them using special browsers like Brave when connected to Tor or the actual Tor browser. But the really tricky thing about these Onion sites is that they're all made up of 54 random alphanumeric characters. So you're not going to be typing those in like regular websites, you know, like youtube.com. You're not gonna be able to remember Onion site addresses. So you need a direct link. And that is where sites like tor.taxi come into play. So here, you can find links to various dark websites categorized by types. Uh, and you can also have some confidence that these links are going to go to legit sites and not scams, at least as long as you're using uh, like tor.taxi or dark.fail is another uh, really popular one where they're reputable, they link to legit sites, uh, so on and so forth. I guess also as long as they don't get hacked, right? Because then somebody could change them. But anyway, if I mouse over these, you see all these different onion links that are in the bottom left-hand corner. And um, some things that you might want to take a look at here, especially if you're new to Tor, is things like the Darknet Bible. Uh, so what this covers is OPSEC, and it has it broken down into different subjects like operating system, you know, they're gonna tell you, hey, don't use Windows and probably use like Tails or uh, Hunix or Cubes, things like that, you know, KeePassXC. Even if you're not using Tor, you should be using KeePassXC. Everyone should be using a password manager, PGP and so on. Uh, but this goes a little bit beyond the uh, scope of this tutorial, right? We just wanna kind of explore the dark web. Oh, and one other thing, that I just wanna mention while I'm thinking about OPSEC, because I see so many beginners asking this, uh, if they need a VPN or whether it's good to use a VPN with Tor, like I guess people connect to a VPN and then they go and connect to Tor. And the answer is no, okay? When you're using Tor, you're already getting way better anonymity than any VPN could possibly provide you. The only possible benefit that you might get with using a VPN with Tor is that if you live in a country that blocks Tor or you're using an internet connection where the network administrator is blocking Tor, then using a VPN would be able to go around that. However, there's already options to get around the censorship built into Tor. So if we go into their hamburger menu and I think it's in settings and connection. So Bridges, okay? Bridges already accomplished that for you. So if you're in a country that censors Tor, you're using a network that censors Tor, 
try using this to get around it. No reason to use a VPN with Tor. That's just, I, I have no idea who is responsible for starting that silly trend, but I just, I see it all the time when people are talking about Tor. Oh, do I need a VPN? No, you don't. So let's start looking at some search engines to actually find some stuff. Uh, now, the only real dark web search engine in here is Phobos. DuckDuckGo, that's a clear web search engine you guys are probably familiar with, but this is just their onion domain. And by the way, lots of sites on the clear web also have onion domains available. You'll be able to see that in the upper right-hand corner. So like Tor Taxi here, if I click on that uh, purple onion domain available, it changes to the onion link, and now we have a little bit uh, better anonymity because now we're not having to go to a um, an exit node to get to this website, which uh, I don't really like exit nodes because personally, I think a lot of them are operated by law enforcement, but that's, <laughs> again, beyond the scope of this video. Um, Recon and Kilos, these are also different than regular search engines. These are more for like searching uh, dark web marketplaces specifically, right? But if you just wanna dig into general things, Phobos is a good place to start. So we can look up something like Monero, for example, right? Pretty popular subject on the dark web, also a pretty cool cryptocurrency. And you can see all of these results that we're getting, these all go to onion domains. And so this is how you start going down the rabbit hole of the dark web, right? You start going to uh, these different onion sites and these are probably gonna link to more onion sites. You know what, what it's like actually, Zoomers won't get this, but <laughs> the older people, uh, browsing the dark web is a lot like browsing the internet before they had search engines, right? Now you can just bring up Google or you know whatever search engine and find a whole bunch of stuff. But way back in the early days of the internet, you would have to go to one site and then that would link to some other sites and that would link to other sites and uh, so on and so forth. Now, Phobos is not the only search engine that's out there, right? You wanna find more dark web search engines, we can just type in dark web search engine. And ho, oh, look at that, we got a whole bunch of results. We got Bobby, which, um, I don't actually know this search engine, so I'm not going to uh, click on it. Might be a little bit sus. Haystack, I, I think, doesn't have any crazy ads on the front page. Um, actually, let me just drag this over here and check. Okay, yeah, Haystack looks safe. Um, another little quick tangent. So a lot of sites, especially search engines on the dark web, they'll have a whole bunch of ads um, that load for various services on the dark web and you know given the nature of the dark web a lot of these services are illegal so if you're using the dark web uh in company or you know somewhere where i don't know maybe you're in public and like a camera might be looking at your computer screen just watch what sites you're going to right if someone sees you looking at illegal stuff on your computer they might try to i don't know call the feds on you um so yeah this is another dark web search engine. We can go ahead and type in Monero like we did, and then we're probably gonna get links to um, other places because all of these search engines, they, they're not always gonna have the same indexes. Sometimes they will, I guess it depends on uh, what indexes they use, but obviously uh, Haystack and Phobos are a little bit different. Okay, so now that you've found some stuff, uh, how do you save this, right? Because chances are, if, if you're just starting to explore Tor, especially if you didn't know about Tor Taxi and Haystack and Phobos and all these things, uh, you're probably going to be going on a, you know, days, maybe even weeks long expedition, looking up all kinds of different stuff. I mean, I remember back when I was in high school and I first learned about Tor, that was like, what I did for probably a month, maybe two months. Like no video games, like no nothing else. I just wanted to explore the dark web, it was cool. Um, so how can you uh, sort of keep tabs of what type of sites you've been exploring? Well, one thing you could do is you could just bookmark them in the uh, Tor browser, right? I mean, it supports bookmarks like pretty much any other browser, but this might not be a very good idea, depending on what kind of sites you're going to, right? Tour Taxi, eh, maybe it's not that bad to bookmark Tour Taxi. I mean, it does have links to market, so you know that might be a little bit sus, but it's not necessarily illegal links to markets, at least not 
here in the US, your country might be different. Um, so, you know, having these bookmarks in the browser might be a bad idea because if your computer gets seized or somebody else, you know, uses it and opens up Tor, they're gonna see all your bookmarks, they're gonna see what you're uh, going to, so that might be a bad idea. What is a better solution? Well, one thing we could do is we could just put them inside of a password database, like KeePassXE. You are using a password database, right? Okay, good. So this is just kind of a quick and dirty way that you can store these. Uh, another option would be to just simply use an encrypted text file, right? So put them into a text file, encrypt it, boom. Nobody's gonna be able to access that without the password. So that way you can store these links, but they're going to be safe and they're not going to uh, compromise you in any way if somebody gets access to your computer, as long as they're not able to break into your password database, which of course you want to use super duper secure uh, master password for that. And probably also two factor with like a key file or a UB key if you have one. So there you go. Now you're able to start browsing the dark web. Have fun and uh, watch out for scams, watch out for hackers, and uh, you know, obviously don't give anybody your address on tour. That's gonna be a bad idea. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey and have a great day.